this tutorial, we are going to get started with the P5.js web editor and also learn about the console. So here I already have my editor opened up. If you head over to editor.p5js.org and um, you would automatically get onto the web editor. Of course, that doesn't mean that you have an account yet. So go ahead to the upper right of that window and just register for an account. And without an account, you can't save your files, which can be a mess. So, so make sure you have an account and save your files into your account. So, so here we are going to take a look at this brand new world. Um, there are three windows that you can see here. Essentially, the upper left is where we put our source code. That is our editor. Um, at the on the bottom of that window, you see console. So, so what is a console? Console is sort of like if you ever driven a car, and if you ever seen at the bottom of your dashboard a symbol light up. Maybe maybe uh, something is wrong with the engine, or maybe something is wrong with the tire, you can possibly have different warning signs coming up at the bottom of your dashboard. That in itself is a kind of console. So, so console is a way for the computer to display important messages for the programmers. These important messages can, you know, maybe be a warning message or maybe a error message. Um, usually when we are interacting with code. Even as a programmer, we don't, we're not able to access and see um, what is happening on the back end of things. So, so being able to use a console essentially let us communicate with the computer and communicate and understand what is happening with our code if something goes wrong. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate um, a way to interact with the console. Oh, by the way, the window on the right is our preview window. Uh, we're not going to be using that at all um, in this tutorial, but that is where you would eventually draw your P5.js graphics. So here, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete function setup and function draw, um, which are kind of the default um, things to use in P5. I'm going to delete that and, and now this is just a kind of pure uh, JavaScript uh, editor for us. So <clears throat> what I'm going to type in here is console.log and following log I'm going to put a parenthesis and following that parenthesis I'm going to put a sem semicolon. So console.log is this, this cryptic word is essentially um, a way for us to be able to communicate with the computer through the console. So for instance, if I um, type in a number five in here, and if I hit this play button, what you're going to see inside the console is it's going to print five. Um, so, so essentially, I'm, whatever I type into the console.log, it directly communicates with the console. I can obviously put any kind of numbers I want. Um, we're really just working within the realm of numbers here. You can, you can put all kinds of things inside console.log that uh, you'll learn a bit more later. Um, notice that JavaScript is a case-sensitive language. Meaning if I change my console.log to like uppercase C, <laughs> it's going to do, it's going to kind of um, scream at me through the console. And, and what I'm reading right now, um, if I try to decipher this error message, it says on caught reference error. Console is not defined. What, does it, what that is saying is that it doesn't know what uppercase C console means because it's case sensitive. And one, one, thing, one other thing that I want to introduce to you is something called commenting. So, so commenting is another feature 
um, in programming where you can take notes um, inside your source code. So that means, you know, maybe this is all kind of arbitrary now. I'm just making it up as I go. But um, the way you would comment, add notes inside of your program, um, there are two ways, actually. The first way is to enter forward slash two times. And here I can, you know, you can see that text is already appearing in a, in a gray color instead of a white color that shows that it's commented. So I can say um, log number three. And if I hit play, uh, you can see that my line number one is not causing any error. It's not being taken into the consideration. Essentially, whatever is um, included inside the comment of a code gets ignored by the program because the program knows that this is just the notes for human. This is not the notes for computers. OK, so why would you ever want to use this? Um, it might not be, seem obvious right now because we literally have one line of code. But imagine if you have like hundreds of lines of code or even, let's say, 20 lines of code. Sometimes you can um, forget what you were writing. I know that happens to me all the time, right? Like I, I could be writing 50 lines of code and I, I go do something else and return the next day and, and like completely forgot <laughs> what was what. I have to like go back and like, like, like take some time to remember. So, so having uh, notes in there to remind yourself, but also if you're collaborating someone to let the other person know what this block of code is actually doing is quite, quite helpful. So the second way to to like comment something out is using forward slash star sign. I'm gonna say again log number three and star sign forward slash. So line two, the second way to to log uh, to comment something out. So so the benefit of using the second way is that you can now have maybe like you know maybe you have a lot of notes and a lot of description and a lot of what you know things you, you need to remember and I can like make multiple lines right so I can say um, this is my first comment this is my second comment this is my third comment and they would all be considered as comments, right? So so this, the second approach that you see, that combination of the star sign, is a way to create multi-line comments. Um, commenting is useful in another context, which is sometimes you have a lot of code, and you want to just temporarily disable one thing so that you can kind of isolate it and you know not worry about it for a little bit. So for instance, if I have two console log and if I put number five below and if I hit play, it's going to log both. It's gonna log number three and number five. Here now I can you know highlight <laughs> my my line, the line that I want to comment out. And I can actually use the use the shortcut key command and forward slash and that's going to help me comment my line seven out so when i hit play it's only going to consider line eight so that can be very useful um, later on especially when there's something wrong with your code and you're trying to debug and you often need to like comment certain things out because you have hundreds of lines of code you're not sure what what went wrong and, and be able to isolate your problems. Oh, one more thing. Um, the the, the uh, star sign and forward slash combination is also useful for um, inline commenting. So for instance, um, let's say here I want to, in console log, I want to log the number 100, right? And maybe now I changed my mind and, you know, this doesn't make any sense at all, but I'm just making it up. Now I changed my mind and I said, oh, actually, I want to comment part of my, my code out. So I'm going to say forward slash star sign, star sign forward slash. So, so you can write it this way too, right, inline, so that when you hit play, it's only going to log 10 and not the extra zero. 
So the last concept I want to address is that you can actually do a rhythmic calculation in your program. And by that, I mean you can actually do adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing um, in your console log. Um, so for instance, if I put 5 plus 5 here, I am actually gonna get a console log result of 10. Um, I can obviously do 5 minus 5. I can do, you know, all kinds of calculation here. I can do 5 times 5. I can do 5 times 5 plus 10. And I can do, you know, 5 divided by 5. So this leads us to the special secret program within this tutorial called the console.log trivia. So earlier, Catherine Mariwaki and I have recorded a lecture um, for our class critical computation where we were looking at different kinds of map projections. I'm going to link the video here. Um, so the question I have for you is um, how many years has it been since the creation of the Mercator map projection? So the Mercator projection was actually created in the year 1569. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the year now 2020 and minus it by 1569 and that is going to give us 451 years so it has been 451 years since the creation of the mercator projection which we still use day to day on google map so that's it for the console log trivia and i'll see you later